part three of the Bat Keyser Bar build. If you haven't checked out the first two videos, I encourage you to go back and check those out first. Now for the tap handles. I actually ended up doing these three times, pretty much. I did the first one initially, and then after I had finished it, I didn't like the way it looked. Then I did a set of three, and as I was finalizing those, I realized that they just didn't match each other. So then I used a technique that I don't know why I didn't start with, because I did it for the legs of a kitchen table that I built. First, I made the template. And then I used this first one to mark off the other two so that they would match the cuts. After I got these cut as close as I possibly could to match the original one that I used as a template, I clamped them all together and I sanded them to make sure they were the exact same dimensions before I started working on them individually. Then I did some finishing sanding on these. I created a jig to hold these while I routed the edges to round them off. I used a round off bit on the router to make the handles round and then I used the 45 degree angle again on the top of the taps so that all those angles would tie in with the 45 degrees that I was putting on the trim work on the bar itself. I didn't have any pieces of wood that were the exact thickness that I needed to make sure that when I was drawing the holes for the tap handles to screw onto the taps, they were the hole was directly in the middle and straight up. So I ended up MacGyvering this jig where I created a stationary drill out of my hand drill so that I could slide these tap handles directly into the bit and make sure that those drilled holes were straight up. The second set that I did that I ended up throwing out, that was the issue, was after I drilled them, I realized the angles on those were not the same, and when you screwed them on, they didn't line up. Initially, I hit these all with that same black paint that I used on the rest of the Keyser bar. Later on, I actually ended up pulling these things off and spraying them because I didn't like how the brush strokes showed up on these handles. I used a fair amount of glue to connect the bar top to the lid. This is permanent. If I ever have to replace this thinking ahead, I realize that the lid and the bar top to the bar were gonna stay, and the collar that I had made. The only thing I was gonna replace was gonna be the deep freeze. And as long as I got a deep freeze that was close enough in dimension so that I could attach the collar to it, it doesn't matter that the lid and the bar top are permanently connected because I'll never be changing them out. I didn't know I was actually gonna need this. I figured that the deep freeze would last as long as the Keyser bar, but because I was not paying attention once to how much it was freezing over, the unit frosted up too much for it to work effectively and the unit just ran continually until it burnt out the compressor. Now that all the painting's done, I went over the entire thing with a satin lacquer, just to tie everything together. And if you do decide to do a project like this, you wanna make sure you hit that like and subscribe. It really does help out my channel and motivates me to keep making these videos. Pro tip, if you are buying towel for your top, don't buy travertine. This stuff is really difficult to work with. It is so brittle. Even with this wet saw, you can see pieces just snap. Luckily, I had enough extra from doing the kitchen floors before that all these pieces that broke off while I was cutting them, I still had enough to do the bar top. But if you're actually buying a product specifically for this project, I would not recommend travertine. It's just so difficult to work with. Now, after I did it, 
I'm really happy with the way it turned out because it really tied it into my kitchen and it also has that nice natural stone kind of look to it. But even as small as this bar top was, these minimal amount of cuts I had to make were really, really difficult to keep the pieces from cracking. I had laid out a wiring diagram to start with. The things I'm putting together for this is two switches on the side. One will control the light behind the logo on the front of the bar and the light above the menu. And then a second switch will turn on the bat signal that shines on the ceiling. And I'll show you how I built that later. I actually ended up deviating from my original wiring plan to clean it up a little bit inside as I was working with it. And Looking back on it, I could have made it even cleaner, but because I had a lot of these extension cords lying around, just old ones, and I got sick of running back and forth to the hardware store for stuff, I just went ahead and did it with what I had on hand. Now, any electrician who watches this and sees the end result is probably gonna be gritting their teeth, but as I said, it's all out of sight and it all worked, and I was using extra pieces and extension cords and wires that I had sitting around in my garage so I didn't have to make more trips to Home Depot to pick up stuff. Wiring up the temperature controller itself is pretty straightforward. They give you a nice diagram. There's an explanation of what all the inputs and outputs do. This one can be used to control hot and cold. So for this application, it makes it even easier because I'm only using it to kick on and off the compressor for chilling. The unit needs constant power to run. And then all I had to do was connect the one relay that trips on and off based on the temperature to the power line for the freezer. Up next, the final video in this Batkeezer bar build. 